Hey there, so I'm doing the first kind of informational video that I've ever done uh, as a response to getting a lot of questions. Probably 50 people have asked me just in the last 30 days this question, and the question is, how do I go to get a job in the web development industry? I'm on the learning process. How do I know when it's time to look? What does that process look like? Who's going to hire me? How, just tell me about that world. And so this video is going to kind of dive into that world for those of you guys who are on the learning curve or look into now or eventually jump into the web development industry and a career in that, which by the way, great industry, great career. I cannot say enough good things about it. So let's get into it. There's been several times along uh, over the years where I've had to interview people for the company that I'm looking for. I was either uh, a key role in hiring that next person or I was just among the interviewers. Um, and so I'll kind of talk from the employer perspective so you can kind of see where the employers are, are going for because if you're a good fit for the employer, then you're ready to get a job. So as an employer, I'm looking for a resume because that's what I'm going to get. And, and I'm looking for indicators on this resume and, as the, and with the person when I sit down to meet with them. Uh, the first thing I'm going to be asking is, is this person on the playing field that I'm on? Um, they don't have to know everything I know. They don't have to be able to do what the good people on the team can do, but they've got to at least be able to be on the playing field. Uh, so the indicators of that are, one, what technologies do you use? Everyone uses HTML, CSS. So that's kind of a prerequisite to getting into web development. You've got to know the languages the web is built on. So you know HTML, CSS. How can you show me that you have a modern usable skill set? Take a day and learn how to use SAS and how to compile SAS um, or less for CSS. These are going to happen really fast and easy. Um, but when I see that on there, I know you're not just some HTML, CSS coder. Oh, SAS and less and stylus. OK, this is good. This means that you learn, you know new stuff. Um, another very common thing, you're going to see HTML, CSS, jQuery tons of jobs that say those three things as pretty much what they're looking for. Uh, contrary to popular belief, there are lots of employers looking for people who can do basic HTML, CSS, and jQuery because uh, they have a lot of high-end devs to do all the complicated stuff, but they need people to push through the content. They need to be able to say, here's a Photoshop PSD file. I need you to be able to you know, slice an image out of it and then do the rest in HTML, CSS. So Photoshop slicing, HTML, CSS, and know some basic jQuery uh, to do a little bit of custom functionality on your page. Um, I'll get back to jQuery in a second on what that means and, and how good at jQuery you need to be. Um, another key indicator, if I see GitHub on there, okay, good, this person takes coding seriously. Um, designers don't really care about GitHub, coders live on GitHub. So create your own GitHub repository, do some pull requests, get comfortable with it. If you know how to put a repo on GitHub, how to make branches and do pull requests, there's some videos I have on that, I'll put them in the description. Uh, you're good to go with that. Another thing is, is create your GitHub account and put your own work on GitHub so they can actually see that you use GitHub repositories for your own work. Okay, another big plus. They actively use GitHub day in and day out. Huge indicator. Um, some indicators that don't have to do with skill is, uh, but are still key indicators, is what text editor do you use? Do you use Sublime Text? Because that goes a long way. Because every serious coder I know right now, uh, I'd say at least 80% of them use Sublime Text. That doesn't mean that the coders that don't use it are bad coders. It just... Bad coders, or, or should I say newbies, oftentimes don't use professional level tools yet. If you can show you use professional level tools, uh, that's going to get you off, off the mindset of, oh, he's a newbie and doesn't know what he's doing. Other things, what operating system do you use? Windows is fine. You can totally do web development on Windows and do a great job at it. But most web developers are going to use Mac OS or they're going to use Linux. Uh, so if you have a Windows machine, consider installing for free, it's free, and you can install it alongside of Windows, Ubuntu Linux. So you can boot up to either one. Um, if you see Linux on a, uh, if I see Linux on a resume, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to think newbie here. Because development newbies just don't use Linux. They, they usually have their Windows computer, maybe a Mac computer, which is cool. But if I see Linux on there, I'm going to be like, okay, this is... This is a person that, that takes what they do seriously and they really want to learn 
uh, professional ways of doing things. And Sublime Text and all that, they all run on Linux anyway, the terminal. It's all the same. Linux and Mac OS are very, very similar um, in the way you would develop on them. So that's kind of some key indicators I'm looking for resume-wise. Let me go back to jQuery. Um, how do you know when you know enough jQuery? Because jQuery, you can learn, you're going to be learning it for like five years. Uh, the first thing I'd want to learn is DOM traversal. You're good with selectors. You can, if I give you an unordered list with five LIs in it, can you find LI number three? And then can you do something to all the LIs that are siblings of LI number three? If, if you, someone clicks on LI number three, can you find the panel that that is a part of? You know, can you navigate the DOM decently well in jQuery? Um, I'm actually building a full jQuery course on that with about 12 lessons that'll cover all these issues. And, and if you know the stuff in the course, you should be good with jQuery. That'll be in the description if I have that at the time you're watching this video. But if you're watching this video the day it came out, I don't have that quite yet, but it's coming. You're going to want to know how to do jQuery user events. So when the user clicks on this, mouses over this, you can fire off smart JavaScript things. Um, you're going to want to know jQuery Ajax somewhat. You're going to need to know how to do get requests with jQuery Ajax, get, say, a list of tweets, um, and put them into your website, you know, through Ajax. So you'll need to know jQuery Ajax. That's probably going to be the last part of your learning experience um, with jQuery. And then you need to know how to use jQuery plugins. You need to know how to grab uh, Woo Slider or Flex Slider and put it on your page and make a slider out of it, which is really easy. Uh, the first time might be daunting, but there's instructions for all these plugins on all their sites. Uh, and that's what makes jQuery great is there's plugins for all this stuff. You need to be able to grab a panel plugin and be able to make a tab panel by configuring that plugin. And so if you can do that, you're pretty much good with jQuery. You don't have to know how to build your own plugins. That's a plus if you've built your own plugin, uh, but you definitely don't know how to do that. And that's pretty much, if you know HTML, CSS, and you're solid with jQuery, uh, you'll have competition, and getting that first job might be difficult, but that's the base skill set you need to get into the industry. Um, what also have you done is, a, is the next huge thing I'm going to look for. If you don't have job experience, you can create your own job experience by building sites for other people. One thing I did when I was starting out, I was 18 at the time, so I've been doing this a long time, uh, but I, I did free sites for nonprofits that I supported, like foster or adoption agencies or my church, um, which most likely they have a, a site that's 10 years old and terrible anyway. So anything you can do, just converting it to bootstrap will be a massive improvement. Um, and they will love, 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 love you for that. Um, and then you can actually, on your resume, say volunteer lead developer for, or lead developer for, and they can say as a volunteer capacity. You'll kind of hide it in there somewhere. And so by the time it's time to look for a job, you've got history. Um, you can put on your resume that you have job history, that you're not a newbie in this, you've done it. And I can even show you my GitHub repositories for these sites so you can see that I actually coded them myself. Um, the last thing would be possibly learn, learn WordPress, learn how to make WordPress sites. Uh, you don't have to do this, but a lot of agencies and smaller design shops crank out WordPress sites day in and day out. And if you know how to crank out a fast WordPress site, buy a template off of themeforest.com, pop it into your WordPress, you know, pop it into WordPress and, and hack it. There are a lot of people looking for people with that skill set. It might be a good first step into the industry. Um, so that's pretty much the whole skill set. If you, if you say yes to all those questions, hands down you can get a decent job in the industry. Hands down it will be paying a, a, a decent salary. Um, and as you grow in those, you can get a really good salary in web dev right now. It may change in the next 20 years, but for right now, if you're good, it's going to be a good job. Um, and so how do you actually go about finding the employer will be the last thing I, I mentioned in this video. How do you actually find those employers? Um, the, the first tip for sure is put your resume online. 
Uh, this is a recruiter driven industry. So there are thousands of people out there whose full time job is to find people like you, even if you're new, and place you in a job. Their job is to find you and then find a job for you. And so uh, get your resume online. Some of the ways you do that is you apply for jobs on Monster. And if they still do this, you can check that you want to make your resume available. You can probably also post your resume on Monster. Big, 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 big point though, do not put your cell phone number on your resume if you're posting it online because that cell phone will ring from recruiters for the next 10 years. After you found the great job, you will still get phone calls that there's an excellent job for you. Um, leave your phone number off. It's a good idea to actually create a professional email account that this is this is your public web developer email account because you will get daily emails for the rest of your life as a web developer. You don't get a ton, but you just, you know, you just want to be aware of that. It's it's the great thing about this industry, but there's minor drawbacks. You want to stay off the radar in some ways. Um, and so lots of job postings. Indeed.com has job postings, Monster, Career Builder. Uh, you can look Craigslist. Generally, people using Craigslist are not going to use recruiters, which means they're not going to be looking to pay top dollar for someone in the field. So odds of you finding a great job on Craigslist are a lot less. If you're starting off and you're just looking for part-time work, work on the side to build your portfolio, Craigslist will be a great place to find that kind of work. Uh, and so that's kind of it. But generally speaking, I would look for companies that are using recruiters because those are going to be more serious companies. Uh, those are going to be the companies that don't have the time of day to go looking for 5,000 people. They're like, look, I'm just going to pay the recruiter $10,000 to find me a great candidate because I'm going to spend way more than $10,000 finding those candidates myself. These are good indicators that you're looking for a good company here. So um, that pretty much wraps up my intro thoughts. If you had asked me out to coffee and said, hey, tell me what you think about this industry, that would be pretty much what I'd give you. So hopefully that's helpful. Feel free to comment if you have any questions and I'll definitely do my best to answer any questions you guys have and hope this was a help to you guys. Have a good one.